Okay, welcome back to the Mental Toughness Podcast.org. I'm your host, Steve Siebold. And make sure you subscribe to Mental Toughness Podcast.org. Mental Toughness Podcast.org. And we'll send you an email every every week with the new episode so you won't miss any episodes. Okay, so today I want to talk about emotional compartmentalization. Wow, like the biggest word. I know, compartmentalization, it's hard to spell too, but uh, but it's a key concept for athletes and really for business people, I think for entrepreneurs as much as anything else, but also just for people in life in general. And that's what's great about mental toughness tools is you use them in life when you're going through storms in your life and you know difficulties and all kinds of things, uh, you know adversities that 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 uh, that pop up for all of us in different ways. You know, it, it life's a funny thing. You know, it seems like when one side of your life is going really well, the other side's going going not so well. You know, and then the other side props up, and then the other the the, the, the opposite side, you know, seems to go down. So you're always dealing with something. It's it's like it's always something kind of a thing, right? Um, that old that old thing, uh, that old character, I forget in that cartoon, it's always something. Well, it is always something. That's just life. And the ability to compartmentalize your thoughts and emotions is is just a critical piece of the mental toughness puzzle because it allows you to move on, uh, go forward when you have all this crisis and this baggage you know, and the other and another part of your life. For example, you know, you get in a big fight with your spouse, let's say, in the morning before you go to work. Well, now you've got to deal with your boss at work and your superiors at work and your colleagues at work and all these things. And, and you're, you're, you know, completely torn apart emotionally because it's some big fight. You know, I mean, let's say it's a big one. It's not a small one. Well, you, you're having a hard time concentrating, Right. And now, now what they do is they give these mental health days in big companies, right? Mental health days. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but but it's it's probably not a bad thing at all. But at the same time, um, we need to be tough enough to be able to put those things in a compartment, those feelings, those emotions, those thoughts in an emotionally tight compartment and put them on a shelf until we can come back home after the job is done or the you know the day is done. And unpack that box and then deal with that set of emotions and thoughts. And so you, you totally separate. You know where people learn how to do this probably more than any, anywhere else is uh, sports. And I would I imagine war would be another one. I have never luckily been in a, in a war situation or any kind of combat situation. But from the people I've interviewed over the years, Navy SEALs, those types of people, they talk – a lot about compartmentalization, the idea that they have to put their fear, for example, of dying in a compartment because they, if they're focused, they're terrified that they're going to die all the time, they can't think about the mission. And so that puts them in greater danger than if they, you know, if they were, uh, you know, if they were having all these different thoughts about, you know, fears and thoughts about dying and being killed in combat and that kind of thing. I mean, that's easy to say hard to do, right? I can't imagine. I've never done that, so I won't talk any more about it because I have no experience in that area. But I will, I will talk about professional sports and Olympic sports and uh, where you're angry at your, you know, when you're winning, it's not a big problem. Compartmentalization of sports, is, there's no problems when you're winning in a sport. It's just, a, you know, you're just moving forward, trying not to get too far ahead of yourself psychologically. So you, you just keep taking one step at a time. But when you're losing, well, that's when you're thinking about how angry you are at yourself. You put all this practice in, the coaches are mad. You know, you're, if you're on a team, the teammates are upset. Everything's upset. Everyone's upset. And it's not a good thing. And you could be thinking about that and how angry you are and how upset you are and all those kinds of, or other people are mad at you now and you're not going to, you know, it's not going to be a good, a good day after a good night after the, after the, the game is over, the match is over, whatever it is. Um, you've got to be able to block that out. Put that into an emotionally tight compartment and block it out. And you get good at that. If, you, if you're any kind of an athlete at all, any I don't even mean a professional athlete. If you're, if you're a decent intermediate athlete in any sport, you've most likely learned to how to compartmentalize. 
because you have to. There's no way you could get decent at it. And if you're if you're a high level athlete, well, then you get very very good at it. You know, people people used to say to me all the time playing tennis, and uh, and I've interviewed a lot of people who've said the same thing. They'll say, well, you know, how do you block out airplanes, for example? You know, flying overhead or people in the stands, you know, being really noisy or people yelling out. You know, almost like a almost like being heckled. Uh, you know, that type of thing. How do you deal with all those distractions? And the answer is, you don't. You compartmentalize. You're totally focused on what you're doing. You don't hear those things. You don't. You don't. If you hear it, you don't process it. Of course, you're physically you're hearing it, uh, but you're not processing what you hear. It's like listening to someone. If you've ever had a conversation with your spouse or significant other, and they go, "Repeat what I just said back." I know you're not listening. Me, repeat what I just said back, and you can repeat it, but you never because you heard it, but you didn't process it. You're not really thinking about what they're saying, and they can tell, and that really pisses people off. You know, so it's not a good idea. We've all done it, but. The idea is, is that um, you're, you're, yes, you hear the airplane overhead, you hear the people in the stands, you hear the people walking back and forth um, outside the, the stadium or the court or whatever, um, but you don't process it. So it doesn't become an issue in blocking or distracting your, your concentration. You learn how to compartmentalize. It's a learned skill. It's not something you're born with. It's something you learn. Okay, how do you do it? That's the million dollar question, right? Because it's, it is easy to talk about. It is not easy to implement, but it is possible. It's a skill. How do you do it? You practice putting your emotions into a box when your emotions are running high and you see how long you can go time-wise before opening the box again and thinking, oh, I'm so, I can't believe she said this. He said this. Oh my God, we went back and, uh, back and forth. How long has it been since you thought that? It may, and in the beginning, it might be a minute. And after a while, it could be hours where you literally just do not revisit that box. You put it on a shelf and you leave it. It's airtight. Not easy to do. I get it. Believe me. I get it. But it is something that athletes practice and, uh, and, uh, and really entrepreneurs should practice and really just anyone and, you know, just in general should practice. But of course, if you're, you're listening to this podcast, you're watching this podcast, depending, um, you're here probably because you're a high performer or you want to be a high performer. People don't care. Most people don't care about mental toughness. Let's be honest. They could care less. You know, I mean, I've been selling this to corporations for 25 years. And the only reason they care about mental toughness is we have a track record of increasing sales and market share for huge, you know, corporations and doing turnarounds for huge corporations. That's, that's how we made all our money. I mean, we did turnarounds for the most part. And uh, so that's when they care. They care. They go, oh, wait a second now. Mental toughness. Oh, that means something. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, here's how you do it. You know, you get people to think critically. You get think people to compartmentalize. You get people to uh, use emotion for motivation and logic for strategy. And you it teach them all these little skills that add up to be big results. And all of a sudden, they start selling more. They start doing more. And results uh, follow. And that's really what it comes down to. But it's a series of psychological skills that you use as building blocks to change performance and behavior and ultimately results. And compartmentalization, I should say that slowly, compartmentalization is one of them, where people have got to put their their stuff on the side. I always remember when growing up, um, our, our family's been in the mechanizations, uh, heavy moving, machine removing and mechanization industry for I guess our family probably and did with different companies for around over a hundred years. I mean, over, over, you know, my cousin, almost every one of my family's in that business. And I was in it for a short time as well. Never really my thing, but, but, um, uh, but I worked on crews and stuff when I was, you know, in college and I worked for a while when we started a company, that type of company years ago. And it's kind of funny because the guys that work, the, the, the workers, the millwrights, uh, for most of our, they're millwrights and they're very talented people. Um, in terms of uh, you know being able to figure things out from a mechanical standpoint, they can take things down. They can you know they they I'm not you know they they there's a lot of things they're really good at and mechanically. I mean that's just their gift. It's never been my gift, but certainly is their gift. And uh, but the one thing they're not good at very I'm generalizing of course to a total industry. So if you're a millwright, uh, don't be mad at me because I I think the world of millwrights. I know a lot of them. I employed a lot of them for a long time. And um, so I get it. And, and they are really amazing people because they do, they do figure stuff out mechanically. I couldn't figure out to save my life. 
But but the ones I worked with, let me say, had a habit of talking about their girlfriends and their, their you know, because mostly it's almost all guys and oh men. And, uh, you know, the problems they were having at home, so much so that it's a cultural thing almost within that that construction, you know, machine removing, a millwright, you know, a pipe fitter, uh, iron worker industry that I, in my opinion, now you might be in that industry and say, see, well, yeah, I've never seen that. I've been that doing that forever. That's just been my experience over my lifetime. Uh, so maybe I'm wrong, but they like to talk about their problems and, and they, they're not really good at compartmentalizing in my, in my experience uh, uh, that is. And so they'd be talking about that stuff all day and the, and the, and the guys make fun of each other. They'll say, look, you know, leave you, leave your problems at home. You know, the foreman on the job say, leave your problems at home, which is what they're saying is compartmentalize. Now, they wouldn't say that because it's not something, you know, most construction people are probably familiar with is a concept of a psychological concept like that because it's not their world typically. It's more of a, uh, you know, it's more from the academic world, I, w- I would say. And so, but what they're saying is leave your problems at home and be on the job, you know, and, uh, and they're right. And that's what it is. It's compartmentalization. It's the ability to block out. And so you're upset. You're, something's going on. You're worried about something. You know, let's say you're sick. You're worried. You know, well, how do you interact with your customers, your clients, your boss, your supervisor, your colleagues when you're worried, 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 if it's on your mind 24-7? You've got to put it in a box at some point and separate it. Again, I get it. Not easy to do. But for high performance, completely necessary. So the way you do it is you just practice not thinking about something that's upsetting you or that's preoccupying your mind when you need to be thinking about something else. It's a matter of separation. It's a matter of compartmentalization. And, uh, and it's a skill you build. And the longer, the more you do it, the longer you can hold on. You will get to the point where you can block things out for hours and hours at a time, where you just do not think about something that's a major concern in your life, but it interferes with what you're doing. So you have to separate yourself psychologically, emotionally. It's a hell of a skill to build. It really is. And again, if you're an athlete, uh, and a lot of people in, in mental toughness, either were athletes or are athletes, um, th- they get this. And then if you're not an athlete, you probably haven't been as exposed as much to compartmentalization, depending on your background. Musicians, especially classically trained musicians, opera singers, dancers, um, magicians are very good at this. Uh, anywhere you have to have a disciplined mind. It really makes a huge difference. It really does, especially when you've got something really, really important. I mean, imagine flying on an airplane and the pilot had a terrible fight with his spouse or her spouse, and you know they're, the the plane's bouncing all over the sky because they're 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 so emotional thinking about what happened. You know, I want that pilot thinking about flying that damn plane. You know, not thinking about what happened with the, back home before they left for the airport. And so it's that same type of thing where um, where they've got it. They've got to separate it. And the, again, the more you do it, the better you get, like anything in mental toughness. So consider emotional compartmentalization. Practice the skill. You've done it your whole life anyway, even if you don't, if you don't recognize you've done it. We've all done it. You have had to block stuff out. You can't carry every thought you've ever had you know, at the same time and continue to function and perform in life. You can't do it. So we all do it. But this is doing it at a world-class level, a high level, to increase your performance when things are rocky in certain areas of your life. But you need to focus on other areas at that specific time. Okay, so consider it, practice it, and uh, let us know how you're doing with that. And remember to subscribe to Mental Toughness Podcast. Dot org, not com, dot org, O-R-G. Subscribe to the top right hand of the website, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll send you an email, let you know what the next episode is. It's every week, pretty much. And uh, you know we look forward to, uh, to having you, uh, and we appreciate you listening to the podcast. Okay? When I say we, I mean me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you next time.